Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Friends. Today, we are going to be going over the Raspberry Pi 400, which we reviewed last time, but didn't really, in my opinion, give a totally fair shot because um, to, be, to be fair, we didn't really like it that much. And uh, we concluded that overall, especially for Wi-Fi hacking, it wasn't quite as useful as even the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, my name is Cody Kinsey. I am a security researcher with Veronis. And today, following the continued mysterious disappearance of Michael 2, we have Michael 3, James. James, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, James, can you can you just begin to describe the brilliance that is the Raspberry Pi 400 and why you are such a super fan of it? You want me to go over it again? Oh yeah, let's do it. Raspberry Pi 400 is sort of like a Pi 4 in terms of hardware specs, uh, but it's in a keyboard. Mm -hmm. But the keyboard doesn't have a trackpad, so you need to attach a mouse to it, and you probably also need to attach a screen to it most of the time. So. And this is one right here that I'm holding up. So uh, as you can see, it's a keyboard form factor. It's a, it's it's nice. It's convenient. It's like easy to put in a bag. You don't need to worry about you know a capacitor getting like ripped off or something by some stray object in your bag. So like I will give that the form factor is easier to use. I am complaining about the trackpad because I have to plug this like wee bass like gamer mouse into it in order to even use it, which I think is lame. And even if it had like kind of a bad trackpad, I still would have paid a little bit extra just so this was like an all-in-one and I could have just plugged it into a screen or VNC'd into it. But those were most of our complaints last time. Aside from the fact that there was some interesting behavior with Kali Linux. So, all right, so Raspberry Pis traditionally have pretty good Kali Linux support, especially the wireless cards inside them. Now, I'm not sure, I haven't really gone in and taken a look at what the difference is um, with this wireless card versus a Raspberry Pi 4. Maybe there is none, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, but what was interesting here is that when we installed Kali Linux, it could not even use the Wi-Fi card in this. It couldn't connect to Wi-Fi. It couldn't do all the stuff that when I installed Debian, it was perfectly able to do. Now, um, since we did our last live stream, we featured a Debian installation, a 64-bit Debian installation, or sorry, not Debian, Ubuntu. I mean, one derived from the other, but a 64-bit um, Ubuntu installation that was doing really well. Um, I killed that because I kept adding uh, Kali tools until I completely filled the SD card and it choked to death. So rest in peace, that operating system. Um, but long live a even better operating system that I found that seems to work even better. So one kind of weird, curious thing about this that we discovered last time is, yeah, if you want to just slap Kali Linux on this, then you will find that you cannot use the Wi-Fi at all. You, it doesn't even see the wireless card, which to me was kind of surprising considering I was perfectly able to use the wireless card in Ubuntu. Now, when I say use, yeah. I mean connect to Wi-Fi. I do not mean do any Wi-Fi hacking stuff. Now you can of course do stuff over you know the network like you normally would with better cap, but really what I mean here is like Wi-Fi hacking stuff. This <clears throat> isn't really the all-in-one Wi-Fi hacking tool I would really want or expect um, from like a Raspberry Pi. So that makes me kind of sad because ever since the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, there's been a Linux tool that you can just slap Kali Linux on that uh, has a supported uh, wireless network adapter that's able to even do five gigahertz. Like all of that is fantastic for people wanting to get into Wi-Fi hacking because you can put it into monitor mode. You can do de-authentication de attacks. You can do lots of really interesting and cool things. Um, I wasn't able to get that working with Raspberry Pi 300, at least on Ubuntu or on uh, um, Kali. So that was kind of disappointing. Although at least we were able to use that wireless card in uh, yeah Ubuntu. So. Um, out of all the various operating systems that we've tried, several of them actually do have versions available for the Raspberry Pi. Although whether or not they've been updated for the Raspberry Pi 400 or if an update is necessary is kind of like, you know, up in the air. But out of all the operating systems we've tried, what would you want to try on the Raspberry Pi if not uh, the standard either, you know, like Ubuntu or Kali? Manjaro. Manjaro, of course, because that easily won uh, as one of the best operating systems we've tried out just for user experience, customization, and the ability to just get set up relatively quickly. Uh, so yeah, this, this is a really good operating system for anybody that is looking for almost like a, 
it's like the Ubun the way that Ubuntu is to Debian, this is to Arch uh, Linux. So if Arch Linux is a little bit complicated or annoying to install, this is a lot easier. And uh, we can also just weaponize it with the Black Arch repository, which is the first thing I did when I installed this. Now I will note, um, my installation did crash last night after I left it running for like six hours. So <clears throat> who knows if this is the most stable project that's gonna like absolutely run forever. But hey, at least it can like make use of the wireless cards and start to do some interesting stuff. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 400 from a Wi-Fi hacker's perspective. Um, we're gonna look at like what the best way to use this tool would be. And uh, my wireless card of choice, I usually like to be like, hey guys, you should go out and uh, get this great wireless uh, like network adapter. The, the adapter I'm gonna be using today, I um, found this in a photo kiosk. And for some reason, it's really well supported by most Linux computers. It's super tiny, it's really little. So unfortunately, um, this is just happens to be a really well supported random thing that I found just out there. Uh, but you can absolutely grab a Panda Wireless or Alpha Wireless network adapter that is supported by Kali Linux. I currently recommend Alpha over Panda because they have a very clear section on their website that goes through what's supported and what's not. So right now it looks like you will need an external wireless network adapter, kind of lame. I feel like it's like four years ago. Um, but we're still gonna take a look at what you can do with this. And we're also gonna take a look at some ways you can get around the limitation on, for example, its ability to do Wi-Fi password cracking. So this is going after kind of the lowest hanging fruit. Like if so, if you had eight neighbors and um, that are in range of you and two of them have really terrible passwords, this is a very practical attack when you don't care about which network you break into in particular, you're just trying to go after the lowest hanging fruit. Now, of course, some people don't like this attack uh, because it will not work if the proper password isn't on the password list. This is a dictionary attack, it's very straightforward. Some people would really prefer that I just like whisper to the computer and have it unlock itself. But this is the kind of attack that like very frequently works because not everybody is good with, uh, you know, with wireless passwords and frequently they just set one that's really easy. So we'll be going through some ways that we can do uh, some basic Wi-Fi password uh, hacking today. So I'm gonna plug this back in, but yeah, sorry, I wish I could recommend even like which, you know, like Kinko's you could go to to find this, but it was just a great find. Um, so guys, go to your local photo kiosk and hope that you find one too, basically. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you guys get lucky too. But again, Alpha Wireless is uh, perfectly fine too. Um, so I'm going to also turn on a hotspot um, just so we can work with something uh, that is actually live. I'm gonna set a password. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Raspberry Pi uh, to actually start hacking. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the various um, images that are available for the Raspberry Pi. James, do you have a do you have something up already or shall I do mine? Yeah, I I have something up if you wanna Yeah, let's take a look. Look at my screen. Okay, so Manjaro actually has like a ton of editions, but I didn't even notice really this whole ARM section. So not only do they have, you know, ARM builds, but they've got ARM builds for all these different devices. But I assume you're using the one for the Pi four? Or is there a specific Pi four hundred one? Um, no, I just grabbed it for the Pi 4. Okay, yeah, so nice. Um, and under the Pi 4, you have a bunch of different desktop environments there's, as well. So you have i3, Yeah, there's KDE. XFCE, KDE, Mate. Yeah, there's a lot of options. Yeah, so which one did you pick? I think I went with um, XFCE. So if you click that, it shows you a little preview, tells you a little description, and you can download the uh, signatures and the ISO if you like. Yeah, and the installation process is super straightforward. We basically did the same thing that we did like live on the air last time where I just took the image, I wrote it to an SD card using Etcher, and then I took that SD card, I plugged it in, and I was able to get it installed in just a couple minutes. It did ask me some weird questions. It's just like, what's your locale? Like, what's your, like, it asked me like a couple of different things where I literally had to look it up because like the, the codes it supplied me like weren't immediately obvious. So that was a little bit confusing. But aside from um, just needing to Google a couple things to make sure I wasn't setting my like locale somewhere it wasn't supposed to be, 
um, I found that it was a pretty easy setup. And once I had it running, it was very stable, uh, with the exception of that one crash overnight. But again, I was running a program that was somewhat memory intensive, and I'm not exactly sure what happened there. So maybe it wasn't its fault. But uh, yeah, I found that this is probably so far my favorite thing to run on the Raspberry Pi, or at least the Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, once you weaponize it by adding uh, the Black Arch repository, you can install basically anything you want. And there's so many tools included in the Black Arch repository that I didn't see the need to install anything from like a GitHub repository at this point. Everything I've needed has been included, which has been really great. Um, Yeah. Black Arch's repository is absolutely huge, isn't it? I'm trying to figure out if they have listed how many tools there are. Oh, over 2,600, so lots of stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, oh my gosh, there's so much. So I, I mistakenly just tried to install everything um, on a different build, and I ended up maxing it out, which was real, real bad, um, and I did not enjoy yeah, it. No. So, uh, yeah, if you don't want to do that, then I really recommend going through the kind of traditional way of doing this. I'm trying to look it up real quick. Uh, but there's a there's a file called strap.sh, uh, which is a bash script file that you can use to install the repositories that you're looking for. And then after that, you just want to go ahead and uh, Black Arch installs this it. Um, you just want to go ahead and uh, install tools as you normally would using Pac-Man um, and just sync anything that you're looking for. So uh, yeah, like overall, it's a pretty simple process. And I think I like how, um, oh, is this it? I was able to find this information really easily last night and then tonight. Uh, oh, here we go. All right, so if we switch over to my screen, I think this is the exact guide that I used. Um, once you get um, Monjero up and running, you can just do um, this command where first you install curl, then you go to downloads, then you download from the blackarch.org website, strap.sh. Really important that after that you do the checksum and make sure that it matches what's on the website so you know that nobody has modified this file because it's going to do a lot to your system uh, after you let it do its thing. So after you verify that the, the checksum matches, then you can go ahead chmod plus uh, x to strap.sh to, to make it executable, and then you can just sudo and run it and it should go ahead and <clears throat> add all the keys that you need, add all the repository information. And then if you want, you can take a look at all the different uh, tools that are available. Or you can just install them one by one using, uh, like, for example, sudo pacman uh, tac capital S Metasploit will install the Metasploit framework. So um, yeah, it's a really straightforward way of getting started with this. I, I think it's really easy for beginners who want to install some tools to just run this and be able to install anything you would expect to find on Kali Linux in you know a matter of seconds. So I found this to be very user friendly and I liked it a lot. Um, let me go ahead and see, let's switch away from my screen for a second and I'm gonna see if I can pull up my, uh, yeah, okay, cool, we did. Oh, and we never switched away from my screen. How wonderful for us. Okay, well, uh, so, oh, so sorry, James. I didn't mean for you to see this code. That was, this is private code. There How we go. rude. Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, so this is my desktop gosh. on Manjaro, and uh, it's really just kind of like clean and simple, and I like it. Of course, I added like a ghost in the shell background because, you know, why not? But uh, here I can go to all the programs that are installed. I can look through stuff, you know, whatever. Um, but most importantly, I get access to the command line, and I can do all sorts of stuff. So right now, if I look, I have... Uh, a bunch of different files, and one of these I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, and we're going to generate a new one, James. How do you feel about that? Terrified. Wonderful. What, so what file what, are you regenerating? So we're going to get rid of WEP, or sorry, WPA.cap. Do you know what WPA.cap is? Oh my gosh, I'm using the wrong mouse. That's, this is so confusing. Um, is it by chance captured packets from your network? You are so sneaky, thing. James. How do you know this? Uh, Ooh, yes. I don't know. Yeah, you're correct. That's that's what it is. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and rename WP.cap to, come on, come on, rename, where is it there, to secrets.cap. All right, so we've renamed it. 
And basically what this file is, is it's a, a, a list of different Wi-Fi networks that we've obtained a handshake for. So that's great. That's, uh, that allows us to then take those handshakes that we've captured and use them to try to break into a Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna use um, Manjaro now to try to go after a Wi-Fi network. And there's a lot of tools that are available here. I've already installed Wireshark, that was super easy to install. I've already installed like Kismet and like uh, Aircrack NG. This was all super, super easy to install. And I think a lot of them I would actually have been able to install in Manjaro just by doing the regular repository they have. So that was kind of cool that they did have some security focused tools. So um, let's start testing my theory. So last time I talked some smack about the fact that the wireless card here wasn't able to um, do anything. So I'm gonna unplug my kiosk one. I'm gonna type ifconfig, no wait, I'm gonna do, no, whatever. I'll, I'll do ifconfig wlan okay. zero Still a down. boomer. What do you mean? You're using the boomer command. Oh yeah, I love it. What, you want me to use IPA? IPA? Of course. James, get over yourself. All right, so uh, if I type ifconfig, it's gone. If I type IPA, just like James wants me to, I can see WLAN zero has been taken down. Now we're gonna do some Wi-Fi hacking, right? Uh, oh, all right, sorry, I have to make this bigger or I'm gonna get in trouble. Right. Large. Is that huge enough? Yes. Let me arrange it. <clears throat> all right, so we have um, we have all this stuff going on. We're gonna do some Wi-Fi hacking. We wanna hide who we are, maybe. We don't wanna like announce to the world we're like a little Raspberry Pi. So let's do Mac Changer. So if I wanted to install this, I would do Pac-Man, capital S, Mac Changer. Do you know what this does? Oh, sudo. Is it a MAC address spoofer? It sure is, James. It sure wow. is. So what this is going to do is allow us to change our MAC address so it's a little bit less obvious that we're the one who's out there doing stuff. If somebody, if for example, if you're sending a bunch of like, you know, bad packets around and you can see, and it's signed with like your real MAC address that links back to a Raspberry Pi and you're the only one sitting there with a Raspberry Pi, not very, not very sneaky. So now we're going to do sudo MAC changer. TAC R, what is TAC R? What do you think that it does as an argument when we're setting a MAC address? Recursive? Nope. Uh, no, oh. idiot. It means we're gonna set it to be random. Of course, if we wanted to set it to be something specific, we could always do TAC M and then do like 69 colon 69 colon 69 colon 69. You get it. Um, although some of my like meme MAC addresses actually will not properly work and I end up just just severely messing up my networking. So if you want to just set a random one, that's what I recommend. If you do sudo MAC changer tack R and then the interface name, in this case WLAN zero, we can see the current MAC, the permanent MAC, and then the new MAC. And the new MAC um, is totally random. It shouldn't have any relation to the original MAC address and that should allow us to do our hacking with a little bit more um, subtlety, wouldn't you say, James? Oh, yes. Don't Under leak, the radar. Don't want to leak our Mac. And of course, we can also set this up to run as a script that goes every time we restart our computer. Um, it's a really easy way to just reset our Mac address every time we restart, which I think is really cool. Um, and James, why might you want to do that? Do what exactly? Sorry. Uh, change your Mac address every time you restart. So that people can't tell you're the same device when you're doing things exactly so you will never so you every time you restarted you would never appear to be the same device you would always just kind of like restart fresh and seem to be a new device so um what is authentication required by wi-fi network get out of here oh it's because i brought the interface up okay whatever no one cares so now that we have this up let's go ahead and see if we can try to put it into monitor mode i don't think we can but let's see if manjaro can do it sudo air Sufo. Sufo. Sudo airmon ng start wlan zero. Cross your fingers, James. Cross everything you have. It's all crossed. Boop, 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 boop. Error adding monitor mode interface. Command failed. Operation not supported. What did you do? Your fingers are clearly not crossed, James. They're, they're parallel to each other. They were crossed. I, I promise. All right. Well, I feel like now we know why it didn't work. But... Uh, <laughs> We can see that it's the Broadcom 43430 
Uh, so James, you want to look that you want to look that little doodle up and see if this is a even supported. Broadcom four three four three zero. What am I checking if it's supported for? Monitor mode or Kali Linux. Monitor mode. Four three four zero. Four three four three zero. Four three four three zero. So if anybody in the chat also knows about this, um, it would be interesting to know. I don't know if this is the same card as uh, you know the other one, but it seems like I, uh, by unless I start installing more drivers. Um, yeah, that's that's what this form thing seems to be saying that you need. Um, you need a, a vendor driver. Which one? And oh wait, no, vendors don't provide monitor mode in their driver. So. Oh. Wow. Yeah. This so is what stuck. this is what this guy this is what this guy says and apparently he's a Aircrack NG author, so Can you switch important. can we switch to your screen for a second just so we can see the form? Wow. Yeah. Uh, the tiny form. Maybe enlarge a little bit. Yeah, so this guy asked uh, Did he ask about the same thing? I think he did. No, maybe he didn't. Maybe he just asked in general. Four three four three zero. Yeah, so he was using the same chip. And uh, this man over here, who seems important, said uh, the fact it cannot determine the driver most likely means it's a vendor driver, and it is well known that vendors don't provide a monitor mode in their drivers. If there is a Mac 802.11 driver available for that device, you need to use it to use monitor mode. If. Hmm. If there is any Mac 802.11. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I've seen, I don't see any um, specific and obvious guides on it. Um, so I kind of feel like we need to do some more research on this. Again, if anybody in the chat wants to chime in and let us know like what you found on this, um, I would love to make this an all-in-one hacking device. And that is kind of the goal of, of what the Raspberry Pi can be. It has the internal card. You can use it for both connecting but also attacking. And like that's really cool. So if there's no way of doing this, I will be truly sad. Uh, but if anybody in the chat happens to know a way of doing that, we will go ahead and try it out on uh, maybe the next stream because I really want to see how we can get that working. But yeah, OK. So for now, it looks like, um, let's see. I'm going to take my kiosk. Uh, wireless network adapter. But again, we might recommend something like the, um, oh man. Um, well, so if I, I'm gonna, because we aren't actually able to provide a recommendation, I'm just gonna actually show you. So if we go to my screen real quick, um, if you just Google Alpha Wireless, they have a Kali Lytics compatible section because they are Gs and they understand what's up. So uh, here you can see, um, this is one of my favorite. Oh, it's end of life. Oh, that's so sad. The we call this one the NE. Um, but the NE is a really good 2.4 gigahertz wireless network adapter that has excellent command over the entire spectrum. Um, this one, uh, the AWU, just it's a big, long series of numbers. This one's great, too, as are, is this one if you want to be able to detach the antennas. My personal favorite, though, is the TubeU, uh, the TubeUN and the TubeUNA. Um, these ones are insane. They're designed to be like outdoors. So you they're like they're for like boats and buildings and stuff. So they're super rugged, not subtle at all. They look like a little mini like lightsaber, but that'll definitely that'll do you. Um, this is another one of my favorites. This is the na. So we have again, if you're keeping score, this is the ne, and then down here we have the na. Um, the na's great. The na's absolutely one of my favorites. So uh, we also have some, of the, I've tested some of these other ones. Um, this one seems to work pretty well with Kali Linux. Uh, but again, all of these are declared as Kali Linux compatible. And oh, and this one's made by like a race car designer or something. There was some weird backstory about why it looks like a shark. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of really great wireless network adapters you can grab to supplement the seemingly not working one, uh, or at least for like packet capturing and monitor mode in the Raspberry Pi. So if you're looking to get started with uh, Wi-Fi hacking, then unfortunately it looks like the Raspberry Pi 400 may not be like the one-stop shop that you're looking for. Um, weirdly enough, I mean, if you just get a keyboard and mouse combination uh, and then grab a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B plus or like four, 
you kind of like have the same situation going on. You you basically have like the ability to like do uh, like Wi-Fi deauth stuff. You have the ability to do Wi-Fi hacking all built into one. So really trying to love the Raspberry Pi four here. But I mean, if you just got a Raspberry Pi four um, or three B plus with a keyboard slash trackpad combination, I'm not sure why this would be better than that when you can do Wi-Fi hacking without any peripherals on the Raspberry Pi 3B plus and 4. So somebody somebody please tell me that you can get it working because I'm very sad that you can't and I find this device to be overall less useful without it. Um, so that makes me sad. Of course, if you wanted to do like, you know, man in the middle stuff where one device is like connected back to one network and then, you know, another device is doing the hacking um, or like providing a wireless network uh, for people to connect to, you could you could do that, but there's an Ethernet port too, and that would be faster. So I find it difficult to even make that argument for why, you know, for Wi-Fi hacking at least, this is better than the Raspberry Pi 3B plus or 4. Sorry. All right, so I, I feel bad talking trash about it, but at the same time, like, come on. Um, it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it, I hate that statement, but yeah, it is what it is. In this case, it is a keyboard computer. All right, so that didn't go so good, huh? No, that sucked. So let's go. I plugged in my my kiosk uh, wireless network adapter. Uh, fine, I'll do IPA because we're fancy. Um, yes, boomer. I'm sorry. You, I called you a boomer. Yeah, it's not only would most of the people on our stream seriously not appreciate that phrase, it's also inaccurate. Um, let's see. Okay, right. boomer. James, stop. Um, okay. Yeah. There, um, James, it's not about me. It's, it's actually a sizable percentage of our audience is probably in the age, age range you're currently making fun of. So on the Verona stream, let's maybe not use that word so much. All right. So taking a look at the wireless network adapters that we have available, let's go ahead and put one into uh, just the randomized state we had before. So we plugged in. Oh, man. Thank you. All right. So Arch is doing the same thing that like Ubuntu does, where like instead of doing WLAN one, it does W uh, WLP one S O U. Like it's just like some big long random string. So we're gonna go ahead and put this first into a randomized state. So we'll do uh, first sudo. Sufo IF, again. Yeah, of course. Sudo if config WLAN zero. No. Oh my gosh. Will it autocomplete? W double a pull. No, it won't autocomplete. All right, screw it. I'm just going to copy it. I'm lazy. Will a pull. My favorite thing is when, like, my favorite thing is when I will put this in. I'm just going to, I'll put this in. I'll put it in monitor mode. And then it's like, this is too long. Renaming the WLAN one mon. And I was like, that is what I wanted the entire time. You are the one that picked this name. All right, so sudo. Um, I have config this crazy long name down. So that should bring it down so that we can randomize it. So we'll do sudo oh, always. They're just very <laughs> close together. Mac changer tack R and then yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we have, you can see also that it identifies um, it identifies the manufacturer of the wireless network adapter for the permanent one, but it has no idea what the hell the random one is. It like doesn't trace back to any particular manufacturer. And that's great, because now we just have some sketchy randomized wireless card that like if someone were to look up like what device is this, it goes back to like absolutely nothing. So cool, dark, sketchy, weird. Now the card is ready for us to start doing Wi-Fi hacking stuff. So now I have to decide how I'm going to do this without disconnecting. The oh, no, I can use the internal card. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I have a wireless network adapter. And uh, that's all right. All right. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. So first, I'm going to do a program called um, B side NG. Mm. All right. Well, I guess I should minimize how much blurring Michael has to do. So before we do B side NG, um, B side NG has a nasty habit of attacking literally every Wi Fi network in range. The purpose of B side NG is to look around, see what Wi Fi networks are nearby, find the ones that have like uh, clients connected or traffic being exchanged, and then disconnect them one by one just enough to grab a wireless handshake and store it in a file. 
So what we're gonna try to do is capture a wireless handshake, but we're gonna do this the legal way. So we're not just gonna let B side NG rove around and start like disconnecting random people's like devices and stuff. We're going to first use another program to do some signals intelligence and figure out which channel it's operating on and you know like how we can target this a little bit more. So if I type man B side dash NG, and this is installed with the Aircrack NG package you can see that um, we can specify the target MAC address. So if we wanted to be really clean about this, we can write a B-side NG command that will only go after a particular device. And that's really, really what we wanna do here. Because if we don't do that, then um, yeah, this thing just goes buck wild and it will go after anything. And um, that can get you in trouble if it chooses to go after a network you're not supposed to. This tool is also made by like a spaz. Like, I don't know how else to like describe it, but like the, it like yells at you and like curses and stuff. Like it's like a really like rowdy program that's like totally prepared to do illegal things if you don't if you don't run it without with some very specific arguments. So for anybody out there that's thinking of running this tool, um, <clears throat> this is one of the very rare tools where I have to explain it does stuff that that could be illegal if you just run it with basically no arguments at all. So um, be really careful with B-Side NG because it will run around and disconnect anything unless you tell it what to disconnect. So this is one of those programs that will just like attack unless you tell it to only attack one specific thing. And, and in fact, it will go after your wireless network first because it's probably the strongest one it detects. So unless you, unless you want it to just like uncage this thing and let it like go after basically everything, you really need to be kind of specific. So we'll quit out of this for now. And we need to get a MAC address. Huh? woke up and chose violence. Yeah, seriously, like like seriously. You'll, you'll see the way, uh, like I think when you run this, it just says, let's ride. Um, and then anytime it's not able to connect, it says crappy connection. I'm like, act, come on, like, act professionally, but then it doesn't and I don't care. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what, um, what channel our network is operating on. So first I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to connect using our wireless card that uh, did we ever bring it back up? Let's see. So I'm gonna do. No, I don't think you did. Sudo if config uh, wlan Confiog. zero up. And once that's up, we should be able to connect to our network. Oh my god, I'm using the wrong mouse again. Um, we should be able to connect to our my our network. Yeah, here we go. All right, so it gives us some options. And what I'm looking for is I want to connect to a network called Michael's Net. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. Is that a memory of Michael too? Yes, this is a memorial network that has been put up to um, act as a, you know, like a, a candle in the window to attract Michael to come back someday. No one Understand. knows why he left. All we know is that he's out there chasing Bigfoot, Bigfoot somewhere. So I can I can decide which network adapter I want to use. Obviously, I want to use the one that is built in because this is like all it's good for. I'm going to connect. And OK, so at some point, we're going to be kicking ourselves off of this network in order to try to get the password. Now I just typed it in, but let's pretend I don't know what it is and that this is actually somebody else that's connected to the Wi-Fi network. I would do this on my MacBook Pro, but then me, James and I wouldn't be able to see or, or hear each other until I connected back to a real network. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead now and start trying to identify the channel. And we're gonna probably have to blur some stuff so you don't see every single network and device around us. But the idea here is that I wanna be able to figure out what channel my target is operating on so I can limit the command and make it faster on B-side NG. I'll, I will also need to get the MAC address of the network that I'm, that I'm attacking. So let's see if I can do that using sudo. First, we'll need to put it into monitor mode. So sudo, oh man. First, I'll just do if config. We got a ways to go. All right, so we're gonna start out with um, oh, it doesn't even appear. We'll do IPA to see that, hey, this big, long, crazy network is um, sleeping. So that sucks. So we got to wake this one up. Pseudo, uh, I have Scoot config. Off. Uh, then we'll do whatever this horrible name is. Up, wake that sucker up. All right, and now we can do pseudo airmon 
dash ng start, and then this horrible thing. And I'm hoping it's going to be like, this is too long. Yeah, short typo there. Wait, where? Oh, there's a next dashes. dash. Yeah. It thinks I'm trying to make an argument. I'm not trying to argue with you. All right. Cool. So it's, uh, all right. Has it renamed it? Let's see. So now we can see, yeah, no, it just made the, the horrible name even longer. Ugh. All right, but at least, so do you know what Airmon NG does? Uh, no. So Airmon NG, man, Airmon NG, is a program that enables monitor mode on a wireless interface. So there's some other stuff you can do. You can actually enable wireless monitor mode um, using IPA. But um, it's really annoying, and I don't like it. And I have, or sorry, um, Airmon NG has been the way you can do this very, very easily for a really long time. So, and it's fairly standardized across different wireless interfaces because there's some like five gigahertz wireless network adapters that you have to start in like a certain way. And this kind of like takes away the trouble behind doing that. And you can kind of just rely on it to act as a wrapper to do that for you. So by using this, I'm putting the card into wireless monitor mode, and I should be able now to use it to do scanning. So I'm going to do sudo uh, aerodump dash ng. And this is basically going to dump all of the um, the input from the wireless card directly to the console. So let, And we're not saving anything. So let's go ahead and do this. aerodump dash ng. Wait. Sudo. Oh, I need to specify the name of the wireless uh, card. So I'll do that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. Because um, I already see what I'm looking for. Over here, we can see Michael's net. So Michael's net is our target. I have the MAC address right here. So that's great. That's what I need. And um, I can also see the channel that it's operating on. We can see that it's operating on channel 7. In fact, it's one of the only networks that's operating on channel 7. So that's really good news. In fact, I'm going to, um, well, let's see if I can do B side NG now with just that. So for B side NG, um, well, all right, let me go ahead and I'm going to open a new window just so I can double check what the arguments are. Yeah, so it's going to be a dash lowercase b to specify the target's MAC address. And I believe I can also specify dash c in order to channel lock. Now, the reason that we want to channel lock is now that we know the channel um, that our target is operating on, we are able to avoid having to attack a bunch of other random channels before we finally lock onto the target. So basically, like the B site NG is able to intelligently like scan through and try to identify uh, the target, but it can take a while and it can be really annoying. And sometimes it might even fail. So if we already know because we've done the scan, we can go ahead and use that information to make this go faster. So let's do sudo B side. NG. And one fun fact about B side NG is it's also typically capable of putting the card into wireless monitor mode for you. So even if you haven't done that yet, you can often just run B side NG and it will be able to do that. Although sometimes it might error out the first time and say that um, the, the card is busy or something like that. But if you run it a second time, it'll work just fine. Kind of cool. I really like the fact that it is able to put this into monitor mode most of the time. But if you already have it in monitor mode, then it will always work without any, um, without any errors. Uh, the first time. So um, I typically wow. just try to throw it into monitor mode to begin with anyway. So, always work, probably a strong word, but. Yeah. Well, it always, sorry, it always works free of the errors I just described. If you do not do that, it will probably throw an error at you, but work anyway. Uh, but it might require you to run it a second time. You like that better, James? Yes. That's right. very concise. Thank you, Cody. So we're going to specify that. So I'm hoping that the MAC address formatting uh, formatting isn't too different here. And I don't need to like remove the, the colons or anything, because that would really be sad. Um, but I'm also going to specify the channel as 7. We can see we've now matched it uh, dash B uh, dash C. And uh, I think the last thing we need to do is specify the wireless network interface. Oh, joy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. It's this big, long, horrible thing. We love to see it. The Wollopolamon. Yeah, I would love to watch people to just like, to try to pronounce it. Pronounce that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. And so this command is now saying, we're only going after this MAC address, and we're only going after 
um, this channel. So hopefully this will be fast. And since we are connected on this Raspberry Pi, we should basically kick ourselves off and score ourselves a um, handshake. So hopefully this works. All right, so Doodle is on the attack. We can see it's attacking Michael's net. It is currently doing some de-authing. Um, and I think, yep, there we go. All right, so all neighbors owned. We have successfully attacked and got a handshake for Michael's net. How do you feel about that, James? I feel like we're doing Michael proud. I know, I think James would, or sorry, James. Michael would be so proud of what we're doing to his poor undefended network. So, exactly. all right, we, we now have a, a hashed version of the password to Michael's net. We're this close to being able to break in. So let's go ahead and look at what our options are for cracking that password. If I go over to these files I've happened to download, there we go. Um, I have, let's see, I think it's under documents, maybe? Yeah. So I have the top one, uh, oh, let's see, one, two, oh yeah, so the top million WPA probable passwords, and then the top 204 most probable uh, WPA passwords. Now, there's a couple things that this list is optimized for. One, um, James, why do you think it might not be a good idea to just use a big, long list of passwords, like maybe, let's say, a billion common passwords that are just general passwords? They're not passwords specifically for Wi-Fi hacking. Well, for like to start with, a lot of the passwords in Wi-Fi networks are de left default and set by manufacturers, so they're similar specifications a lot of time. Well, one thing is, what is the shortest Wi-Fi passwords you've ever set? Like how many characters? Eight, I don't know. Eight, that's exactly correct. You cannot set a Wi-Fi password that has less than eight characters. So if your password list contains a bunch of passwords that are less than eight characters, you are just burning electricity for no reason. There's no possible way that that could be the right password. So when you're looking to do Wi-Fi like um, like dictionary attacks, it's really good to look for compilations of you know password lists, like things that are uh, containing a lot of different really really common passwords. But the drawback here is if you're not specific about which password list you're going after, you end up grabbing a password list that's contained uh, containing maybe you know 25% things like root, tor, like you know like default passwords for lots of different devices that are much much shorter than what is typically allowed for WPA. Uh, or WPA2. So you don't you don't want to use any password list for Wi-Fi hacking that contains any passwords that are less than eight characters. So if you look on GitHub and you look for WPA password list, trust me, you'll be able to find some good optimized lists that are always going to have the correct amount of characters and have duplicates removed and make this really easy. So I went ahead, I think this was like the fourth or fifth Google result when I looked for WPA password list GitHub. And um, there was way more passwords than this. In fact, um, if I go to my downloads, oh, wrong mouse again. If I go to my downloads, I think that I even have just now like, oh, here we go, gigabytes of password lists. So I have like the top 204,000, top 85 million passwords, uh, top 8 billion passwords. Um, 8 billion. Yes. Um, I have done multi-billion password cracks before um, when I was like really determined to try to get into a network. And like, you know, it takes a couple of days, but it works. It's no, it's no big deal. So how do you think the performance on the Raspberry Pi 400 is when it comes to password cracking? Screaming, would you say? Not quite. Not Given you usually want a GPU crack and it doesn't have a beefy... It doesn't have a dedicated GPU at all, and it doesn't have a beefy graphics unit. Right. Even so, then does, so. so you can definitely do some cracking on the Raspberry Pi 4. Like, for example, a lot of these lists, if you're just looking to audit the top 204,000 passwords, that's going to take you about 30 minutes on the Raspberry Pi 400. Um, is that bad? No, not really. Honestly, oh. like if you if you're trying to get into a specific network and you just want to see if like it's one of the top 204,000 worst passwords. 
that's actually pretty good, you know? Like, and let's say that you wanna you wanna do a billion passwords. Okay, tough guy, like cool. There are ways of getting around this, and we're gonna show off one today where we basically just spin up an AWS instance. Uh, I think we're just gonna use Ubuntu server, and we just log in over SSH and do our password cracking on our AWS instance on our Raspberry Pi. So if we really need to offload something to uh, you know some uh, to something that's a little bit more beefy, then we can just pick an AWS instance that makes sense for this. And I'm going to be using a free tier because fun fact, uh, I apparently need to enlarge my G Spot instance uh, by begging Amazon in order to be able to launch a graphic uh, like a graphics augmented uh, Amazon instance. So I could be doing serious GPU cracking that's doing like a lot of passwords per second, like an absolutely crazy amount, if I was able to do GPU cracking using Hashcat. And if you guys are interested, I will figure out how to do this and finish dealing with Amazon and pay them like the $16 or whatever they've decided I owe them. Um, because it is pretty cool to use this little Raspberry Pi to grab a handshake upload it to the cloud, let some beefy Amazon computer run for like an hour to like just chew through, you know, like a billion passwords and then come back with the results so much faster than you could ever get with the Raspberry Pi. Um, again, I've been denied my uh, G Spot enlargement thanks to uh, Amazon telling me that I owe them like $16 for something I don't even like know what they're talking about. So we can't do that today. We're gonna be using free tier. But if you are able to put in a request to enlarge the number of virtual CPUs, uh, available so you can run a, a like a G something like instance, then you're able to use a graphics accelerated um, instance that has excellent GPUs that's capable of doing a lot of password cracking. And you can do that on the Raspberry Pi by just SSH again and uploading something, uh, that being the, the hash and then any password list that you want to run. So I've already tried that out today and I found it to be pretty satisfactory, but we're gonna go ahead and run this and see. I hope. I hope that I didn't set too bad of a password um, and that we can at least see how this like works a little bit. So I'm gonna be lazy. History pipe grep air crack ng. Look at me, I'm so smart. All right, wow. so I'm just gonna go back through my history and grab the appropriate command. And you can see, let's say that we wanna try to crack with um, the top 1 million probable. So we're gonna go and we're gonna use the file that was generated by B -side NG, which is wpa.cap. So this is a capture file where it very conveniently saves just the um, just the handshake that we ha the handshakes that we've captured in B -side NG without having to save the entire giant capture. So one problem is that if we do like a uh, an arrow dump ng capture and we also we're trying to capture a handshake, but like it takes like 20 minutes or something. You know, we have a ton of unnecessary packets in there and extracting them, we can do that in Wireshark, but doing so is not completely intuitive because you need to do things like include a couple of like beacon frames as well. Uh, it, it's just like, it, like cleaning up the data and making the file small is a little bit annoying. So having it do this automatically is really cool. So we're gonna do aircrack ng dash w is gonna be our, our word list that we're cracking with. So this is gonna be our top 1 million or, oh, so yeah, our top 1 million passwords. And then we're going to select WPA.cap. And if there's only one network in there, it's probably not even gonna ask us before it launches this attack. And what I want you to pay attention to is the number of passwords per second that this little Raspberry Pi is capable of doing. So let's go. Oh wait, that's the wrong keyboard. There. Okay, well, that didn't, all right. So I guess I could have picked a better password, you guys. Password one, two, three. Listen, I well, just... Well, you, you can see, before before it cut off, it was doing, what, 467 keys a second, apparently? Yes, it was doing 460 keys per second. Maybe I'll even try... Uh, <laughs> that's so funny that it did it so fast. This is like, just like a little Raspberry Pi. Um, so let me go ahead and try the top 204,000. Maybe, maybe it'll take a bit longer, but again, I should probably just pick a different password, you know? Um, but equally, it may never find the password if you... Pick one too difficult. This so. is true. Okay, well that wasn't much help. <laughs> but you can see that this thing is like averaging, you know, like uh, like 500 keys per second is kind of what it's going close to. So James, if you were gonna pick a moderately difficult password, what would you what would you pick? Password three two one. No, James, come on. It's gotta it's gotta last at least a couple of minutes. Password one two three exclamation mark.
I don't know, to be honest with you. All mine are completely random, so. Um, okay, we're going to do angel with a capital A, one, two, three. The variation in caps, uh, wait, is that even long enough? It, it took it, so fine. The variation in caps should be just enough for us to be able to make it a little bit harder. So let's, um, fuck, wrong keyboard again. Sorry, this is driving me crazy. Um, so we're going to remove um, the WPA.cap. Yeah, yeah, do it. That's what I told you to do. You do it. And now Wi-Fi has been kicked off. It's like, what's going on? And uh, wrong keyboard again. Uh, wrong mouse. Uh, so we're going to say angel. One, two, three. Was that what it? Sure. Let's see if it can connect again. And then hopefully it's going to operate on the same channel. So I can just rerun our last command and we'll repopulate WPA.cap with the updated um, the updated password. So it looks like it connected. So I'm going to just run my uh, B side and G command again with the targeted information. Can I just say how well this seems to be running for Raspberry Pi? Yeah, for real. Like it's so stable. Like I, I'm genuinely really impressed. So I get the feeling it's not on channel seven anymore. So I'm just going to omit that and just hope that the rest of this command will work. If it changes its Mac address, I will be seriously sad. Um, Smelling, smelling. I don't think your router will change. No, I'm using a cell phone. And my phone will typically, I've set oh, it to yeah, its maximum no. security setting. So you know what that means. That just means that all we got to do is reset our targeting information. So we'll arrow dump NG. We'll control C. We can see it's now operating on channel 6, like a sneaky little bastard. And we just got to now specify, all right, channel 6. And then, it, oh, look at that. It's changed its precious MAC address, too. Great. Well, your attempt to hide won't work. Um, although, like, I really have to say, like, cool job, computer, like, um, trying to protect me. Uh, it's cool that the current version of Android does that um, and, or allows you to select that. So let's, let's try running it again. Boop, 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 boop. OK, it says all neighbors owned, yet I feel like all neighbors were not owned. So let me. LS. So do I have anything in w, WPA.cap? Cat WPA.cap. There's nothing in it. There's something in it. Look. It's what? just not. Uh... <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was something there. Well, I killed it now, and I want to run it again. I want, I want visual confirmation that this target is owned. Boop, 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 boop. What? Got, oh, got replayable packet. no, 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 no. I know why. I know why. So there's another file in here. It's um, bsideng.log. Do you see it? Oh, yeah. Uh, bsideng.log. OK. Um, so now that that's gone, so what it does is bsideng.log uh, keeps track of which networks have been owned. So um, if it if it hasn't if it's already been owned in B side ng log it won't go after it again. Look at that. See, I fixed it. I was so right. Wow. Yeah. Drop out of school, I'm kids. Um, all right. So this is now attacking Michael's net. Um, R I P Michael's net, and we've owned it. So we should be able to rerun again our aircrack ng command, and maybe this password will last a little bit longer, huh? Maybe. But maybe not. So aircrack ng, and then we're going to use our top 1 million passwords. Let's see how long this one will go. If it did, gets it instantly, I'll be so pissed. All right, so this is going to take 34 minutes. Um, we're cracking at a rate of 590 passwords per second. Is that pretty good, James? For a Pi, yeah, that's really good. Yeah, for a Pi, that's pretty good. I mean, for another computer, uh, it's trash. But for a Pi, you know, not bad. And of course, if we wanted to do this even faster, then we can use Hashcat and like really bump up the speed. But we're not going to do that. So instead, we are going to log in to a Amazon instance that I've set up. So first, I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat again. Sorry, guys. Uh, oh, it can't find it. OK, so Correct. one thing, one put, thing. No, it's fine. Grab. Um, wait, what? You didn't put grab. Oh, you're so oh. right. James, you're so smart. This is what we have you here for. All right, so one thing I can do is once I know the location of my Amazon instance, I can send over these files by basically just using these commands. So I'm going to copy this one. Um, and then I'll clear it so that you guys have less random text on your screen to see. So I'm going to clear this, paste it. So 
Uh, what is SCP, James? Very good question. Usually for something like this, I would use uh, SFTP, so. What is F SFTP? Know. FTP, but for files. Oh, okay. Over, so, over or FTP, it's like FTP over SSH is what I'm, what I'm thinking of. I don't know what, I okay. don't know how to, the actual proper name, but. Yeah, so this is, this is for like, fi um, for file copying over a network. Um, and what I'm going to use it to do is I'm going to, provide an SSH key, which is, uh, it just generated like a very severe sounding one, Dagger Ghost. Um, Dagger. And it's going to send the WPA.cap file over to my Amazon instance. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And what this should do then is I've already provided the password list, but if this actually works properly and my Amazon instance is still up and running, which I'm, I'm actually shocked by, what, what, it worked. I'm so confused, all right, cool. Uh, yes, everything's working today. It's it's very unusual that everything works perfectly. Um, I have now sent the password that I've captured um, over to uh, my Amazon instance. Am I still cracking? I forget. Did I stop that? If so, why? I think you stopped it. Why did I do that? Well, whatever. Um, I mean, but we could see that about the rate that we were getting. So I'm going to type ls, and here I've created a remote login.sh script. So um, what that will do for me is allow me to log into my instance, uh, my Amazon instance, by just providing it the IP address. It'll go ahead and take care of the other stuff for me. Very short bash script that I just whipped up so this is easier. So I'll do remote log, wait, yeah, remote. Why are you not auto-completing? I don't trust you, doodlebug. Well, I guess I could just- But yeah, just to, just to correct myself from a minute ago, SFTP is the SSH file transfer protocol, there we and go. Um, it's transferring files over SSH. Basically, is uh, the traditional use. Got it. Okay, so um, I'm going to attempt a remote login to my Amazon instance now, and identity file perm not accessible. No such file directory. Uh, oh, permission denied. Why do you hate it so much, Doodlebug? All right, all right. I guess I'll have to manually log in. What what year is this? All right, so, uh, um, so sudo ssh tac i, and now I have to drop my public key. So for anybody that's like running anything ever um, online, you're gonna. Oh, I'm using the wrong mouse again. It's driving me insane. Um, you're gonna want to have a, a public key. Uh, or like a like a key file rather than a SSH password. So that's what I'm doing. And then I'm logging into Ubuntu at this WAC app's IP address. Let's let's try this. Eat it. Yeah. So I think Cody, you can put your file in like the home user dot SSH directory, and it will automatically grab it when you try to do stuff like that. So you don't have to specify it. But Hey, okay, well that's all very cool, but look at this, we're logged in. Isn't that awesome? Wow. So now Amazing. on our Raspberry Pi, we are logged into a, again, a free tier Ubuntu Amazon instance. So um, we are now able to do a little bit better on cracking than we were on this uh, Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna type, let's just do, I think I have aircrackng, and I've got, of course everyone, if you wanna do some real cracking, definitely use Hashcat instead. So we'll do air crack ng, and we'll specify the word list file of top 1 million. Come on, autocomplete. What is wrong with you? You're so moody. All right, I'm just gonna copy and paste. I don't trust the way you're acting. Um, Cause there's also templates maybe or something, I don't know. With a capital T? Oh yeah, I guess that is, but it should have suggested, but whatever. Um, and then finally WPA.com. Okay, it suggested that one, cool. So because there's only one password, uh, there's only one network in this list, it'll probably just go off to the races and start cracking. But um, the goal here is just to show that we can like do a lot better by just connecting this Raspberry Pi to an Amazon instance. So let's go ahead and start cracking and we're running. So we can see that instantly we're already getting double the cracking speed that we were getting. And that is still pathetic. Um, you know, if we wanted to get a, a slightly nicer instance that had better 
uh, processors or like more processors or more GPUs would be kind of preferable, then we could absolutely do that. This is just to demonstrate that by connecting this uh, Raspberry Pi 400 to an Amazon instance, I can use this physical hardware to gather the passwords and then I can go online and upload them to my own Amazon instance and use Amazon's cracking power to try to get the password faster. So you can see that rather than uh, 34 minutes, hey, it got it. Look at that. Thanks, Amazon. Wow. That's awesome. So um, we weren't able to get the password because it was just taking too long running the Raspberry Pi, but it only took us, um, well, for one, it was only 3.85% of the way through the list. But uh, yeah, it only took us 41 seconds to burn through um, 47,000 passwords and get the correct password for this Wi-Fi network. So really, really, really cool. Um, I feel like this is more of like a, like, like talking about how great Manjaro is uh, at this because um, it runs so smoothly on the Raspberry Pi 400. Like it seems really great. The only complaint I have, of course, is the wireless card, the internal wireless card not supporting this. It's really the last thing that's necessary to make this like a, an all-in-one Wi-Fi hacking suite. The fact that you have a wireless card that you can't actually use for this kind of stuff is kind of lame. But yeah, I think we've we've set out to prove what we wanted to prove here, which is that you can do Wi-Fi hacking using an Arch-based distribution on the Raspberry Pi 400. Obviously, you, bet you get better cracking speeds, but when it comes to things that are not dependent on the processor or GPU speed, like just grabbing Wi-Fi handshakes or even doing some things like better cap over a local network to do local network hacking, this is actually a pretty viable system. And you know, if it's just something that's slipped into your backpack that you just connect, I like the fact that you know it has the Ethernet port too, so you can just like connect it and then have a keyboard ready to go, especially if you're doing command line stuff. like. That's pretty cool. So if you're only doing command line stuff or if you just want to be able to use this as a base to add other stuff onto, I think it's, you know, it's a great way to get started, but it is not an all-in-one Wi-Fi hacking kit the way I would describe like a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus or Raspberry Pi 4. So a little bit of a downside to that, but again, like, it's still enough to get started provided you either get lucky at some random pho photo kiosk with a uh, Kali compatible wireless network adapter, or if you just happen to buy one from Alpha Wireless or Panda Wireless. Or just check out eBay and try to find one of the compatible ones if you want to save some money. Because like there are the ones that are supported are pretty common and um Oh boy. Well there, there's so not like a lot of supported did, ones, but so, the ones that are supported. So are, one of our, our earliest live streams is we bought um like ten like Kali Linux compatible wireless network adapters off Amazon and we tried them all and like less than five of them worked and one of them would hard reboot um, Kali Linux as soon as you plugged it in continuously. Like until you unplugged okay. it, it would just continually reboot Kali Linux. It was crazy. Yeah, but so I what might, I mean is like look for a specific wireless card on we did eBay, yeah just... we did what and they it was still like yeah i i will just say if you want to get a wireless network adapter that works and you don't you're not looking for like the best deal where you don't care if like three of them don't work then like i highly recommend panda wireless is a budget one where like you're talking like 15 to 30 dollars and alpha wireless is like a high slightly higher budget where you're talking like 30 to 100 dollars but like if you try to go much lower than that you can get them for like 13 bucks but like some of them will crash your computer or get super hot or just like do other stuff even if the chipset says that it will work just and if you crack them up and they're also full of hot glue which might be part of the issue um but yeah we um, we did this on Periscope, so it's actually not on the uh, the official channel, but because it was one of our first live streams when we were kind of testing stuff out at the local um, Null Space Lab Labs hacker space in Los Angeles, and like we were like shocked by how poorly these wireless network adapters do. So we we're inundated with people complaining that like their their stuff doesn't work. So that's why like I try to steer people towards the the brands I know work because man, there are some really sketchy stuff things out there the funny thing is we tried to follow up on it uh like two months later and most of the network adapters we bought were no longer for sale they, they'd been like other other random ones with different packaging around them had like taken their place so it was like it is really the wild west on like the super low end of the wireless network adapter uh spectrum so oh. be careful Alpha Wireless or Panda, what, what should we call it? Yeah, Alpha yeah. Wireless or Panda Wireless. Um, Alpha Wireless is super nice to our show also. They send us lots of wireless equipment for free. So if you want to support us uh, and let them know that you appreciate that, then 
I recommend Alpha Wireless. Also, their equipment is just generally, you know, better. Like, this is one of their directional antennas they sent us, and, like, the, the, their products are really, really, really good. Um, Panda Wireless is perfect, perfectly serviceable uh, as well, but they were rude to us, so I always mention them second. Wow. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, that's all we have today. Thank you guys for checking out another episode on the Raspberry Pi 400. Again, I really think this form factor is cool. And I love recommending these as kind of beginner hacking kits because they're low cost. They generally work with a lot of the stuff we've discussed. And, you know, they, they work with the favorite operating system that James and I have tried so far, Monjero. So if you want to try out uh, Arch Linux on a Raspberry Pi 400, then Monjero makes it a super user-friendly experience. And um, today, as you saw, I was able to get started Wi-Fi hacking very, very easily. Of course, I glossed over the fact that I also installed the like strap.sh file I showed in the beginning in order to enable the Black Arch repositories. But as soon as you do that, then you can install basically anything you need on this and get started super fast. So that's all we have for we today. We covered that. Huh? We covered that in the mentor oh, in the Yeah, and also, yeah, we did it that and then also, um, no, we didn't do it in Black Arch because it was already installed. It was just messed up. But yeah. yeah, we covered it in the Manjaro stream. So if you guys want to see a little bit about what it's like to set up and configure Manjaro, make sure to check that out because we've uh, we've already covered that. And it was one of our favorites because it's just a very like smooth and easy to use operating system as a daily driver. That being said, mine's crashed once, but you know who knows why. It crashed um, one time. It's terrible. Okay, okay. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in my, <laughs> in my 24 hours of testing, I have one crash. Um, but I did leave it to do some intensive stuff overnight, so who knows. So, okay. yeah, as always, uh, make sure to check out some of the other great stuff we have on this YouTube channel, as well as the Veronis brand account. We have our uh, sometimes co-host Killian on the Threat Update show, which is on the Veronis brand channel, going through what big companies are dealing with in terms of cyber attacks and how they're reacting. And we have my coworker, Mike, who is now doing the CISSP certification study hour, which is on Mondays. So if you want to learn about getting certifications, if you have questions about getting certifications, or if you just want to hang out and study along, then make sure to join us on Mondays because we would love to hear your feedback on the show and uh, make it as useful as possible for anybody who's looking to break into cybersecurity uh, as a career. So. James, thank you as always for joining us um, in Michael's continued mysterious absence. I hope if Very he mysterious. is in your basement, you are at least feeding him. And uh, we'll see everyone next time. Bye.